Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate in randomly released during the week Final Fantasy podcasts that sometimes don't even have us on them. <laughs> Final Fantasy podcast. Uh, I am your host, Caleb Schweiss. I am your other host, Greg Troyan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to get out of your get your get your Greg impersonation though. How would you? I'm do your that? other host, Greg Troyan. Yeah, I don't know, like really excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, I'm Joe actually, and today we have with us uh, Ryan. Tell me if we're saying this hey. right, Ryan McPherson. Sure. Sure. Is that like an avatar name? Yeah. That's what it's that honestly, like. yeah, it's it's <laughs> McPherson McPherson. And it goes back and forth, and I think even people in my own family say it different, so I don't think it matters. Oh, oh! I was hoping it was another like Bill Mardigan. He's the guy who played fourteen. We played fourteen with, and his name's not Bill at all. <laughs> and like, it's so weird. I'm like, wait, so you made a a fake name that's a real name? <laughs> and the answer was yes. Pretty and I was good. Like, okay, that, that's fine. <laughs> Cary Grant did it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so Ryan, uh, we want to thank you for for uh, being a, a friend of the show and helping us out on Patreon. Um, and uh, of course, this is your episode, and we're going to talk about your Final Fantasy story. Uh, you, real quick, though, I'm I'm wondering, uh, how did you find the show? Uh, yeah, how did uh, you find? The yes, show? so um, I don't know when it was. I mean, it was a while ago. You guys started what five years ago? So I, yeah. I didn't get in right at the beginning, but it was probably the – maybe it was the, the end of the – you guys started in May, so I think I found you guys in the winter at some point. But basically that same – it was really weird because the same time you guys started, I was like, you know what I haven't done? I haven't played all the Final Fantasies in a row, so why don't I go ahead and do that? <laughs> so actually I was doing it the same time you guys were, but I didn't even know that. Um, and then one wow. day, I don't remember if it was six months into your show or maybe it was a year into your show or whatever. Uh, I basically said, you know, I, I listen to podcasts a lot and it's mostly sports. And at that time, I think it was mostly sports and Corolla. Um, but I was like, you know what? I should look to see if there's any final fantasy podcasts. And I don't, you, I mean, Joe knows cause he started it. I mean, he, he was the one looking for final fantasy podcasts. Right. And he was like, yeah, these all, none of these are really what I want. Right. So I found yours, and uh, and I found the first episode. And uh, the first thing I read is, uh, you know, warning, you know, the you know, please continue to listen, even though the first episode sounds like shit, you know. So it's like, <laughs> um, but um, that's basically what happened. Um, so uh, so I I think I I was you know midway through, you know, Final Fantasy eight VIII or nine when I found your show, having played from one at that point. Um, so it's kind of weird that we we were actually doing the same thing at the same time just that, you guys were recording that's also weird because i think that's around where we were at that time because I, I know we did eight, seven eight during... i think was at the beginning of 2015 oh was it yeah. oh, okay so he was ahead of us that's good i was yeah. i was gonna be like man that's kind of sad if you were like on par because <laughs> we started taking forever <laughs> with these things we have moments we yeah. have like months of like a lot of games getting beaten and then they slow down to a halt and then they go forward again. Yeah. So back, well, back I, then, though, I think there was a huge gap between, like, I don't know. We're obviously looking through the old episodes right now. But there was a huge gap between, uh, I think, like, four and five. and Five and six. Five and six, yeah. yeah. We took a while on those. Uh, that's that's great, though. I, I feel like we should put that disclaimer at the beginning of, like, the first, I don't know, first 60. year and a half. 60, <laughs> 70 episodes <laughs> warning. <laughs> <laughs> gets much better later regardless of what people fucking say <laughs> hosts get way better at podcasting and and not sounding like assholes but being more asshole-ish well i don't know ryan not ryan good. has the perspective on <laughs> yeah. this yeah well, yeah 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 ryan have we gotten worse <laughs> at podcasting or just in attitude towards life whoa hold on now ryan um no, you guys are yeah no i feel like i grew up with you guys right no uh but yeah it's um i think you guys have definitely gotten more polished at podcasting if that's the thing but uh and joe has definitely cut down on his his c word usage so that's a huge that's a big deal <laughs> cut down huh 
<laughs> except for Chocobo's Dungeon. That was a that was an exception. That was a relapse. That was an exception. I didn't honestly didn't say the c word until like until we were on a trip for this podcast. I never <laughs> yeah. said the c word in my life. And then Schweiss was being one, and so I called him one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I drew it out of him. I I, I siphoned the hate. Well, it was beautiful. There you go. All right, Ryan. Let's get into you. Uh, let's uh, let's dive right into you, and let's uh, let's um, talk Final Fantasy. When did you come across? <laughs> when did you come across Final Fantasy? Just the concept. So uh, I would. Wait, let me think. Uh, so I'm an original FF1 guy. Um, I yeah. I got to do. Let's see. We got an NES, I think, when I was like six or seven, um, and I think it was like a couple years later, so it was probably in like 90, 91-ish, I went over to my friend's house, and he was playing FF1, um, and I was like, oh, this is really cool, and blah, 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 and I borrowed it, and so it kind of hooked me there, um, you know, just, uh, you know, so I ended up getting my own copy, and um, I must have played FF1 because, you know, I mean... I guess some of you, uh, I don't remember, Joe didn't really have a console or anything, but I mean, you remember probably like back in the day when you had like three games and you had to get as much time out of it as possible. So I probably beat FF1 30 times or something like that, oh. different ways. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the original NES version too. Oh. Yeah, original. You get really good at, you know, learning how many times you should attack one guy before you move to the next one so it doesn't disappear and you waste all your attacks. But yeah. um Yeah, but it I mean, you know, you run through that game pretty quick now. Um but uh you know, I always liked it. I was I was a big like um like a, a fantasy guy, uh, you know, um and and uh, stuff like that. So it was really kind of fit fit what I was looking for. Um, so, you know, I kind of fell in love there with FF1. And, and then I actually, what was interesting is I actually got a Game Genie, um, which made it even more fun because then you could, like, play with the stats of the characters at, at, at load. So that's probably, I probably only beat it, like, maybe five or six times without the Game Genie. But then, like, you load up. Yeah. Um, and then, like, you could start with, like, two. So the best thing was, like, you start with, like, 256 speed or agility or whatever, so you can never get hit. Um, and then you just do whatever you want for the whole game, you know, where oh, you start wow. with 255. Actually, it, you know, and actually that's where I learned uh, hexadecimal code because FF was like the highest. Uh, FF is 255 in hexadecimal, so that was the largest because it was 8-bit. So actually, you guys you guys know that, right? 8-bit? Yeah, yeah. 8-bit? Sure. Hex- <laughs> eight, yeah. I know that's why. I'm, the stats I'm electro- there. I'm an electrical engineering professor, so it's. it's <laughs> uh, I, uh, I uh I took stupid math uh, a couple <laughs> times in college, and then I barely got by in whatever. I think it was like statistics. No, no, it was like a. There was some course. It's like math for art majors. So it's like we got to give you something above whatever the basic is oh my gosh i've forgotten the course name <laughs> let alone everything that was in there i remember bell curves that was pretty cool i do i do remember different counting systems including uh, hexadecimal but yeah i'm out of i'm 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 out <laughs> i don't get it let's just sit here in silence a little bit longer and yeah let me just well anyway i mean if you want me to just keep keep yelling at at the screen here uh so i played the i played one i played the you know i played one forever um and i was actually going back and trying to remember how the hell i beat one when i was like eight um because you'd have trouble now trying to beat one um and it's because i i remembered that i also borrowed my friend's strategy guide ah. when i took it. so it was kind of i knew the thing the hardest thing with one isn't actually playing it it's knowing where the hell to go knowing where to go so having just the you know the directions pretty much did that um so I never got like the full where the hell am I supposed to go experience with one because I kind of pretty much remembered the path after that. Um, Does anyone have that experience? Is there anyone on <laughs> well, the planet who always, found their I've way? To, yeah, I've listened to a couple of podcasts since, including you know like yours, where people play FF One, and they don't realize that when you bought when you got FF One, it came with a map. 
and it came with a booklet and it came with a list of all the items and equipment and all the monsters and everything that they never have when they because they just get the cart or they emulate it or whatever um so oh wow do you happen to still have that curious i do the map is in really bad shape but it's uh it's still in technically one piece although it has a couple of slits in it um but uh are you on twitter am i on twitter yeah uh yeah you should tweet that map to me even if it's in bad shape. Okay. Yeah, unless yeah, it's a... like the the Constitution where you like can't do phones with it, you know? <laughs> Send a photo out. <laughs> the flash will just disintegrate it. <laughs> yeah. Might be. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll take it out as long as, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm pretty sure I know where it is. I think it's still in the box, too, which is even in worse shape. Uh, that's crazy to have a box for a fucking anything Nintendo other than the Switch to have the or the, I guess on the Wii and the Wii U. So and the, half and the of, GameCube. Okay, ha, okay. Yeah, so yeah. A, a quarter of the Nintendo consoles to have the case is like otherworldly. Like when you find a Game Boy game with the case, you're like, oh my god, what is that? Well, they're solid. They stack. <laughs> you, know, you don't well, need a protected disc. True. Yeah. True. But still, yeah, it's... I tend to do that with like things I really like. So like, uh, you know, um, like most of the FF games I get now, I spring for the the Steel Book Edition and stuff like that. So keeping the box was probably something. Although I don't think I have the FF three, um, you know, six box, but maybe I do. I don't know. Well, anyway, it might be worth a lot actually. Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, what what did you do after FF one? I mean, it sounds like you played thirty times. is pretty insane, game genie or no? Yeah, well, yeah, that's so. That's the thing is that I didn't I didn't play much other than um, FF one, and then uh, what else did I play with my brother? Like Mario and stuff. So the next the next thing is I got a SNES around ninety four ninety five, um, and it must have been before that because I remember. I remember seeing the actual ad on TV, the commercial for six or three as it was with Mog in it. And I was like, I need to have that. Right. So I go to my parents, like, I need to have this. And they're like, well, save your money. Right. And I'm like, all right, I'll start saving my money because it's not out yet. Or it was, I don't know if it just came out. Um, so I actually skipped four um, because I don't know. I just never did it. That was other stuff on my SNES, probably Legend of Zelda or something like that. But, um, the when I actually went to buy, I don't know if you guys know this, but do you guys know how much it was to buy FF three or no. six? No, uh, that, probably forty. Forty. It or was eighty dollars. What? It was eighty dollars for the cart. That's how much SNES games were back then. I remember I paid eighty dollars for Tecmo Super Tecmo Bowl. Yeah, those games were all, were a lot. Oh man, um, that was a lot. I saved all that up doing. I don't know, raking leaves or something, but uh, <laughs> that's a lot of fucking so, leaves, man. Yeah, I, I mean, seriously. So, um, I bought a Game Boy Advance for that price. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's how much I paid for my 3DS. Speaking of like, <laughs> I mowed lawns and I bought a Game Boy Advance for eighty dollars. Yeah, imagine if you just got the game. That's the console. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The game for eighty dollars. Damn, dude, is that was that like how it was back then? Like for real? I mean, uh, sure. I remember paying eighty for multiple multiple games. God. That one and Tecmo Bowl, and yeah. Do we want to so, do that two percent a year and figure out how much uh, how much of inflation that would be? Yeah, it's today. like a yeah. It's about as much it's as like a, a Neo Geo or whatever. Like a hundred and fifty dollar game or what? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> That's a lot. So what year did that come out? Was that 90? That was 94. Four? Okay. Yeah. Schweiss is looking it up. We got to find out how much that would be today. 94? I think it was 94. In the year 2019, $80 would be $137.95. Yeah, oh, shit, dude. That is that is messed up. That's a lot <laughs> that's, of money. That's that's less than the collector's edition Swish bought for uh, whatever that was. With the, the, yeah, the that's Studio true. NT. You got a better. NT. You got a better deal too. <laughs> <laughs> you got a way better deal. I guess it's not that expensive. When you when you put it in any context. <laughs> so with uh, uh, Final Fantasy uh, six. Actually, just real quick, yeah, yeah. Before we get at that, I'm just thinking like how old I was back then. I was like twelve. So I was like, you probably could have bought like two bicycles for like eighty dollars back then. Like it was just nuts. 
how much I spent on that game. So um, obviously I played like the crap out of that. So that was pretty much, I remember I got it and I think I beat it in three or four days. Oh really? Wow. And the, I remember the last, and it was, a, I remember the last day just like that, that, I mean, that game's like crazy because I remember playing it and I remember getting to, uh, you get to Tasma um, at the end and you know you're like you're like hey we met the espers and we made friends and uh leo shows up and they're like wow everyone's great and i didn't know because i never played two because no one really in the u.s played two that they do the same thing where they have like the false ending right because even in two they have like a dance scene right at the end and it's mm-hmm. like oh actually the uh your brother's here and he's uh or your best friend's here and he's gonna light everything on fire but um so so when so I was like, oh, I beat it! Wow, that was really good. And then it was like Kefka shows up, or Kefka shows up, and I'm like, oh, there's more. And then it was like, I go to the floating island. I'm like, all right, here we're gonna do it. I'm like, oh, there's more. And I was just kind of like, wow. It's the game so that never I, ends. <laughs> the ga- yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of that in there. So that game, um, that game, I played probably probably I, I don't want probably the most just hours wise. Like obviously it, you have to play it a way more um it run the run time is a lot longer than one but um but yeah i i love six it's like i don't, I don't want to spoil the list but um that you know i paid 80 dollars for it and played the crap out of it so um you know i've beaten that multiple times you know in fact i you know i actually with all these games i've beaten them on their carts but i've also played like the steam versions and the you know the other versions so oh, nice. um yeah i try to play you know, I played the GBA version. I played the Steam version. You know, so, but, um, but yeah, I played six, and then six was pretty much it, um, because I was a Nintendo guy. Um, so no PS one, and so from ninety four to two thousand, it was pretty much six or Zelda. I was probably probably playing Ocarina and stuff like that on the sixty four at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I never got a PS1. I never had a PS2. Um, and so I actually picked up 7 in college. Uh, they had a PC release. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, let me tell you, PC releases back then were – I mean, Steam is like the greatest thing ever if, you, if you're a PC <laughs> gamer. Because I had like five discs – and there were so many bugs. Plus, I was running Windows 2000. I wasn't running Windows 95 or Windows 98. And, oh, you know, and, and so choice. like, you, right. So, well, 2000 was really good for most things, just not games. Not games. Um, <laughs> yeah. So but there were so many bugs and I had to like I had to basically I think the, the biggest problem was it would crash every time. Seven would crash every time when you were in um when you're in, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking. Uh, the place where you meet Kate Sith, the the theme park. Gold oh my God, saucer. Gold Saucer. When you had to do the Chocobo race to leave, it it was like there was something with the video card that it couldn't process the like 3D Chocobo thing, and so it would crash every single time. And I was stuck on that for so effing long, just trying to get through the crash. I think I eventually played it with no video, like. Right. Because you don't actually have to – you have to win, but it's, like, really easy because, like, you're supposed to win. So I think I just ended up somehow cheesing through that, and then it was fine for the rest of the game. But that was that was pretty so brutal. You just, wait, so um, you played it – you played through it on, like, a blank screen for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, oh, pretty wow. much. Like I figured out a way to, like – or I put it – I don't know. I, I don't remember. It was I mean, it was 19 years ago. But it, it, there was something I had to do to, like, cheese through that, that glitch. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, so they, I think they since patched it. I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, or maybe you know what I did? No, I remember. I had to install. I installed another version of Windows on another computer, got through that part, and then took the save file. That's what I did, and then I took the save file over after it. That's oh, that's exactly man. what. Wow. Yeah, so I had to install it, you know, multiple times on different machines, but I got through, and I like seven, so. Um, yeah, I'm I'm rambling here, but do you just want me to kind of just keep going through this? Yeah, you want me to comment? This is your or? this is your Final Fantasy story, man. So you was this the? I, I never. I I don't think I opened the little copy I found on PC. Was it just like a 
like an oversized, like a double CD case, basically with the game inside of it. Is that kind um, of what no? You so up? back back in, back then, they that used to do like sleeves. Box. Yeah, it was like a giant. So it was like if you picture like a like a booklet almost, like it was like a, it was like f- the width of a CD wide, but then it was like three CDs tall, and it would have like little sleeves down the left and the right. I think that's the way this one was. The the PS one version had the like double thick thing but for pc for some reason they did like sleeves on the left and sleeves on the right and there were all these discs and and of course even though you installed the whole game on the pc you still had to change discs which, well, you gotta you gotta uh, remember up until steam became being a started being a thing and pc games like got smaller and the section got smaller in the walmart and everything the boxes were all those big huge cardboard boxes yeah Do you that's remember true that? yeah 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 and I think yeah, that, there's like my my entire rig is like 12 by 10, and I think that's the size of like the Neverwinter Nights box I got when I bought that <laughs> or whatever. You just lean it against your tower. Just remember one of my yeah. one of my favorite like all time like favorite gaming things was the Warcraft three uh, battle chest that had like Warcraft three and then the expansion. Oh yeah, and it's and like 10 feet long. I used to have the Diablo two box, and then like there was a game called Kohan Armin's Gift, and that had a really sweet artwork. So I kept the box for that for a long time. These are big. None of they're not in proportion because none of the PC like companies talk to each other. Like, should we standardize a box? <laughs> no. Uh, well, they all had to come with manuals too, right? So if yeah. you got the war chest, it probably came with like you know eight thousand pages worth of it came text. With two strategy guides, yeah, a World yeah. of Warcraft demo, like it was big. Yeah, the Diablo like strategy guide. I remember that being in there. Yeah, for D two, I was like, wow, that's that's really nice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> PC gaming boxes were different, and then Steam took over and destroyed the the secondary PC market. <laughs> Yeah, and now all that's left is bulk games with like Wheel of Fortune in them. Yeah. Just, they'll just never Casino be bought. Casino <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, the old people have moved on. <laughs> they have Steam too. <laughs> yeah. At some point they bought. So, oh, I got a new computer. It doesn't have a disc. <laughs> yeah. Slot in it. <laughs> Still freaks me out. But oh, did not have an optical drive. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird weird you got um any extra, extra yeah anyway so that's how i played seven i played seven on pc and eight on pc oh um, how was the eight port yeah i played the eight port to cd and then there was no port for nine um which i was always mad about because i could never play nine because i didn't have a ps1 or a ps2 um and uh and i basically so i played seven i played eight and then i played diablo 2 you know that's what that's what I was doing around that time. Good choice. Um, and eventually, by the way, I, that's a great game. It is. Yeah. Oh, you want to talk about? I I think Diablo two probably has my most hours in one game, but we don't need to get into that. I got a wrist injury uh, just farming Mephisto. You know. Oh my god, um, Mephisto! <laughs> How could you farm? How could you? Well, I mean, killing that guy first off is insane. Let alone farming his ass. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, we that, but yeah. <laughs> did you play it online? Um. Anyway, I bet you did. Yeah, I played online. Yeah, I bet so. you did. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I love Diablo too. Both me and Schweiss played that game for Nude Clan, and absolutely adore that game. Oh yeah, it's great, man. It's fantastic. Are you still there, Ryan? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah, it's just a bit of a delay, so I'm not sure when to talk. So, um. But yeah, so I played 7 and 8 that way, and then basically I didn't play 10 until, um, oh, what happened? Uh, when uh, In college, I moved into like a, uh, like a house with a bunch of guys, and someone had a PS2. So then we had 10, but the one guy had already started 10, and I wanted to play 10, so we had like these dueling save files that we were like trying to get through. Um, so I ended up playing ten on my own and watching him and things like that. But ten, you know, ten. That's how I played ten. Um, oh wow! Yeah. You guys. So did you ever touch eleven? Curious. So I no because by the time eleven rolled around and then fourteen, I was back into console gaming, so my PC wasn't really up to 
speed. So I never played like World of Warcraft. I never played Eleven. I never played Fourteen. I just enough. basically you were, a, you were a PC guy that whole time, you know. <laughs> In the one game yeah. that came out. And then my, my PC got old, and I'm like, yeah, I think I could get a console. Yeah, okay. So there you go. Yeah. Um, I also was graduating from college and was poor as shit, right? So I understand. <laughs> so the console costs a lot less um, than, a, than a new gaming rig. But uh, yeah, so that's how I played uh, 10. And then uh, my brother went to college and he left his ps2 and 12 was coming out and i'm like well his ps2 is you know i got his ps2 so i might as well buy 12 so i bought 12 and so that's how i paid i played 12 uh just the regular kind um and that was good and then uh fast forward when did 12 come out it was like oh 20 2006. 2006 yeah oh six oh six oh six okay. yeah october yeah, so then I, 31st i believe on Halloween? <laughs> I think so, or close to. But anyway, um, sorry. Now we gotta double check this. <laughs> All right, I'll keep talking while he's looking it up. But right. so I I played twelve, and I, you know, and then I went off to grad school, and I ended up getting PS3. Um, and then I was like, you know, I, was, I when I got my PS3, I was finally like, finally, I have the ability to play seven, eight, and nine on the original. PlayStation discs, right? But this was before, I'm pretty sure this was before they released the Greatest Hits versions. Really? So I had to buy them secondhand. So I think I have all the originals that I got, you know, off Craigslist and stuff like that for 7, 8, and 9. How much did you pay for um, that? Well, um... Because this was I, I during the time care. when was, 7 was rare. I remember. So seven, I yeah, seven, I think was rare, but I only paid like twenty five bucks for it because the girl's like, "Yeah, I beat it. I don't need it anymore." I'm like, "Okay, I paid thanks. 50. I paid fifty twice for seven. Twice. <laughs> yeah, I had two copies of seven. I paid for it twice. One I bought off of Schweiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a while ago. It's before the podcast. A couple years before. Yeah, it was. That was forever ago. Shit. It's... So yeah, that's not bad. I mean, uh, that's that's good that you were able to go through them. I mean, how, it was seven? Did you like seven a lot more on the when you played it on the PlayStation? Yeah, yeah, it was way better that time. I would say yes than the than the PC version. It's funny because uh, six is the ver- is the game that's kind of like the worst made because it's so fucking glitchy. Like there's so many things wrong with FF six. Oh. Yeah, like the dude. What is it? The, the the invisible doom or the invisible death trick and hell yeah, half the spells don't do it. And there's no uh, you 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 have no magic armor. Like it's just bugged, doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like there's things that will actually break the game down. Like <laughs> that's like unheard of for Final Fantasy. And six is like this beloved treasure, and it's the one that does that. And but for well, you, you're like no, no. They were working on other things. For... Obviously, they were trying to make a really great game. They, they yeah. forgot some stuff. And Ryan's like, no, no, seven is the one that's fucked up, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you got? What are you talking about? Seven's it's a trash heap. It's just it won't even <laughs> yeah. run. I can't even play the chocobo part. It's just so bad. Did you play thirteen? When it came out, or anything like that? Thirteen? Yeah, thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, so then, so then I had my PS3. So in '09, I graduated from graduate school. I ended up getting like a real TV finally, um, and I got uh, 13. Right, so I was like, oh wow, thir- you know, a new Final Fantasy. This is great. I'm actually going to play it on television. <laughs> HD, and it, that game. I mean, that game looks still looks good. Yeah. I mean, um, so I played 13. I played 13 two. I played 13 three, um, and I never never touched an mmo so um i never played 14 and then obviously i grabbed 15 when that came out um and uh basically i think it was pretty much the fact that 15 was coming out that was sort of like the impetus for why i started playing them all over again i'm like well why don't i play them all from one all the way through all the games and then when 15 comes out i'll be ready to play 15 um and i actually got a little behind and I ended up not playing 15 until like the until like February or March, right? Oh. It came out in, which was actually probably a good thing. 
uh, based on how it released, right? You guys played on release, and uh, um, you get some of I, those patches, the story patches. Yeah, some of those important patches that I, I just still laugh because I was thinking of like when you guys were doing your review, and you're like, you know, you're like just. Letting everyone know this is the OG 1.0 release day version. You're like, <laughs> could you make it jokes like someone's gonna listen to this in like in like six months and be like, what are they talking about the jump button being a problem? Like they <laughs> totally patched that up. But yeah, they never did patch. They that. never patched. No, that I don't one. still. <laughs> no, but <laughs> they had other buttons available. You yeah. can't make the action button a different button. There's, there's literally like 15 unused buttons on that controller, I think. Plus, like a touch screen thing in the middle that they could have used. Like, oh, anyway. I yeah. can't believe they didn't patch that. <laughs> that oh, that hurts me. Yeah, that's fucking. That's sad, man. I uh, okay. So you went through all the games. Uh, did you? So just, yeah. So you then the MMOs. Was, so I that's assume? when I played. Yeah. Well, so that's when I played two three four and five for the first time yeah. it was actually after 13 three um so I, that's when i yeah tell us about that experience tell us about like what kind of new perspective did you get on final fantasy that you didn't have before uh by going through it in order yeah, like so, that? yeah so playing them in order was really interesting because you know obviously i knew one and i actually played i think i played the nest version i didn't play the donna souls version but i did play the donna souls version for two um and you know playing two was i mean you're gonna see when i do my rankings but it, it's pretty frustrating the leveling system um you know and, and things like that but uh i playing two you could kind of see where they what they were where they were going and you could also see why maybe they didn't bring them over um right away um, because they, I don't know. It was, it was the, the, the other thing is I played when I played three, I played the DS version. Um, so obviously I didn't, I've never played like the fan translated, uh, original okay. NES. Yeah. yeah. But, um, the, there were, I don't know. I don't know what the, how to, how to describe it, but you could, you could definitely see the progression in the series, especially like going from three to five with the with the job system and then kind of like I had played 10 2 and I had played 12 with the job systems before that. And I kind of saw like the progression of how they were doing the job system. That was interesting. And then, you know, you run into Gilgamesh and five and you're like, Oh, that's where this comes from. Right. And there's all these things where like, if you've never played, you know, you know, two, three, four and five, you see all these callbacks that, you know, I was like, I don't, who is Gilgamesh? Why is this a thing? But then, you know, you can't. Yeah, you get to see the okay. origins of everything. And yeah. And you, yeah, you see the callbacks a lot easier. You see the progression of how they were experimenting with uh, both storytelling and with gameplay mechanics um, and kind of like what they were experimenting with. You can see like certain games are like the ones that move forward, like a really big kind of like movements forward and then another game will just kind of be like the polisher game like right after it like mm -hmm. three to four like obviously they have a job system in four but it's based on the characters as opposed to you uh like four's characters they're they're in place they have a certain job just like in two but they kind of like take a lot of the abilities from number three but then they bring back the job system in five and just like kind of expand it make it better yeah um and then, then they did it in tactics too same thing yeah hold it back so they're all there's kind of like a conversation going on between <laughs> like in square co and square enix as, as a as the games move along like what did we do last time that we want to keep what did we do a couple games ago that we want to bring back um and yeah i think it's i think it's a cool thing to go through the the series in a row so it's cool that you do that um i think if you um one of our older listeners at Green Mushroom did that. Uh, we were always like going back and forth on on, on each other's rankings, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. So I don't know. I recommend it to everybody out there, but I assume you skip the MMOs. Yeah, I just skip the MMOs. Oh, okay. So yeah. I played Crisis Core after seven um, on that run on that, and then uh, I did skip Dirge. So <laughs> oh, why would you skip Dirge? <laughs> It's uh, its name is fitting. Um, 
All right. So, any uh, besides uh, Crisis Core, what do you think of Crisis Core? You know, the thing about Crisis Core is it's you know it's sort of like a dumbed down fifteen where you just mash X, right? Um, yeah. But the story, while it's not super, I mean, they they kind of retcon some stuff when they did that, and and it doesn't quite. It's not it's it's not super tight, but seven's not super tight either, right? <laughs> But there's such an emotional – like I found like there's such an emotional attachment with the characters that you don't – like there, there's certain things that like I appreciate way more in 7 having played Crisis Core. Um, and I actually think that, you know, I mean everyone's all about Cloud, but I think Zack might be the protect – you know, the hero we needed rather than the one we got. But <laughs> – Okay. <laughs> uh I don't know. I mean, it's also the soundtrack in that is effing amazing. Oh, the soundtrack's so. great. Yeah, uh, that's one of true. the best things about that game. Um, I think that's probably my favorite. If I had to, re- I'm also like really big into the music. Um, so like, um, you know, most of my my opinions on the games have like the music actually plays a large role in how I rank them. You know, obviously the story, but um, like that that price of freedom, which is like the basically Zach's not Zach's theme, but it's basically like the main theme of that song is probably like my favorite piece from the whole, whole series. Oh, wow. You're dethroning Nobuo, huh? (laughs) Kicking him down. He has the next, uh, next 12, probably next 12. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But that song's really, I mean, that's really good. Uh, what other spinoffs have you played? Uh, I mean, I paid 10, two, um, I played that twice. I hated both times. Uh, spoiler alert. And uh, I played thirteen two and thirteen three, and I tried to play tactics. I tried. Oh yeah. Oh, do tell. <laughs> so I was all excited because I was, you know, I I found your show late, and I was like, I'm not gonna jump in. I, you know, what I should have done is I should have just jumped into where you guys were, because then I could have probably been more like a member of the community and stuff. I was like, no, I'm gonna listen to them all in a row. And so the thing is, even though I started listening to your show when you were probably reviewing nine, I didn't catch up to your show till you did Lightning Returns, right? That's how many hours you guys Ooh. recorded. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really get to to give any reviews because I wasn't. I was like, you know what? I should have. I shouldn't have done this. I should have just jumped in and done them at the same time or something. But I finally was like, all right, this is it. They're playing tactics next. I got tactics. <laughs> I'm going to play it along with them. Which I'm version? Put a review in the forum. This is going to be great. Here comes my social interaction. Um, and I started it three times, and I never got past, what is it, the, the slums fight? Oh, the, the, yeah. yeah. It's like way early. And it was like, okay, first time through, a mage nukes my whole party. I'm like, all right. All right. Well, you know what? Maybe I don't understand the system here. Let me grind a little. Maybe Oops. I'm the one that's wrong. Don't do that, right? So you can't grind in tactics because the the random encounters get harder, right? And you don't even have job. You barely have any jobs at that point, so it's not really worth grinding anyway. And eventually, I was just like, "Why am I? I'm not. I'm not doing this." It it was really more. It wasn't the difficulty so much as it was the fact that it was like I would do one fight and it would take forty minutes, and I'm like, I can't. I just can't. It's like they walk so slow. The animations are so slow. I can't. I was playing on a PSP, and I was like, I just can't do it. <laughs> so I gave up. I, you know, that's the one. That's one. The one game I gave up on. You know, that, I played Reaching Memories, but I, I gave up on Tactics. Was that War of the Lions then, or did you play the PS1? It was. It was War of the Lions. Yeah. Oh man, you should see the. You should have seen the videos of Joe starting that game out. It was pretty bad. It was exactly how it was when I first started Tactics. Cause Tactics just barebacks you, man. It's it's <laughs> not easy, and it's yeah. you do you can grind, but you have to know what you're doing. Or grinding, it it's bad. Like you have to know exactly what you want in that world while you grind, or they will punish you. You don't even get to time grind. to like learn about it. <laughs> no, you don't. You just have to have <laughs> Craig tell you how to do it. Just get auto high potion. Yeah, if you get auto high potion, you don't have to play the game anymore. Then grinding is a, is a nothing factor. Yeah. But you have to know that you have to get that for everybody, <laughs> or you're fucking done. It's terrible, honestly. Like guys, I looked forward to tactics for so long, and I was raped by tactics. Tactics. <laughs> I, I let I let tactics into my home. Uh, <laughs> 
and then I gave uh, <laughs> I gave Tactics a drink, and you know we were having a good time, and then well, then it all went downhill from there. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember watching you play it, and there was just the the you got to the part where you, it was like eight monks, <laughs> just like the fucking <laughs> monk, the monk religious death squad that came through. <laughs> you Buddhist, bro? <laughs> like no, <laughs> they just beat the shit out of you. It's like, well, now you're dead. Oh, that's exactly <laughs> how it is. God, the monks. Oh, man. And see, I, I love that game. Like, it's 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 going to be up there, like, really up there for me. <laughs> Fuck. All right, well, but... someone in the Final Fantasy community will be happy. Yeah. With their representation. Um, and I, I also play Record Keeper. I've played Record Keeper probably for the last four years. So oh, it doesn't cast them. Oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> four years. So it's fun? It is. I mean, it takes a little bit of getting up to speed. Um, but once you're in there, there's a ton of endgame content. You don't have to spend money. They're really good with the free. Um, they call it it's mithril. It's like you know jewels or whatever. They're really good with the the free system. And, you know, if you're if you if you're smart and you read the forms a little bit, you know what to do your gotcha grabs on. Um, and you know you could be playing. I'm playing all the endgame stuff, and you know it, you have to also like grinding. So in farming, um, so if you don't like farming, there's really no play, no reason to do it because, you know, I mean, you could do it and beat the end game stuff one time, but really the point is to go and beat the end game stuff over and over and over again to get more stuff to then go do more, you know, so. Oh, well, I mean, it's a time sink. It's a time phone sink. Phone game. So yeah. I guess, yeah, that makes sense that that would be that way. I, I do, uh, I do want to say real quick while the page is open and we didn't actually correct this. Twice. What is the release date for Final Fantasy XII? March sixteenth, two thousand six. Uh huh. Yeah, it's real close to Halloween, <laughs> right there. I remember Halloween, <laughs> but I guess that must have been when I played it the second time. Uh, what did you think of uh, the Thirteen trilogy? You played all three. Yeah. No. I mean, I I really like Thirteen, and then Thirteen Two. Um, it's funny. Um, I guess Thirteen Two was was sort of. Uh, that was that was the first one I played where you could have monsters in your party. I think because I didn't, I never did that in ten two, even though I think you could, right? Yeah, I think so. But um, so that that was really interesting. Um, playing that. Um, and I really liked the the thing about thirteen two is if they didn't call it thirteen two and they gave it like a cool name and like some time travel game and they they got it away from thirteen, like if they I mean, just they called they that, did. Final they did. They the entirety of thirteen by. I mean, if they had just said here's Final <laughs> Fantasy fourteen or. I don't know, 14 might have been out at that point or 15 or whatever. And they actually spent some money doing the, the graphics. Um, that game is, is that probably better than 13 um, other than the polish they put on it. I mean, the, the, I mean, I have some gripes with 13. The biggest one is that if your party leader dies, you, you game over, which is dumb. And I have no idea why that was never fixed. Um, but the most all the combat stuff is way better in in thirteen two, and the story's not. I mean, if you take the fact that lightning's in it out of it, um, you know, it's actually a really good story. Um, but you can't. You know, I know you can't do that. But and then thirteen three is just, it's all combat. It's all about yeah, FedEx quests and learning <laughs> how to fight. I mean, that's. So yeah, it's yeah. amazing how fun those fetch quests are, though. In 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 that game, like for me, it's like it's I don't know, like the fifteen ones. I'm like, yeah, these are stupid. But then when I was playing Lightning Returns, I was like, yes, because you've got this whole layout. You're like, all right, this time to this time, we could do these five quests, and then you just go do them, and then it's like, oh, now I have to go back here. I don't know, man. It's such a shitty story for Lightning <laughs> Returns. Like, do you agree with that? Like, do you, do you think the story is absolutely terrible in that i mean yeah it's it, i mean i mean hope steals the show with his you know robot hope or whatever oh i mean God, yeah he's in there the whole time it's like hey lightning i have another th bit of information for you where you're like oh my god just shut the hell up i'm just trying to <laughs> find the clocks in this town why am i finding clocks it's like okay <laughs> oh by the way this is earth yeah. yeah, yeah, that was but, I was hey, so mad. That that like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hope is God. And this oh, is I don't know. Twice did you play? Did you? I want to ask you about that. Did you ever play it on hard? Uh, 
I don't think I did. No. So I, I I didn't really like the game the first time I played it on normal, but when I did New Game Plus on hard, it was like way better because the combat was like more. It felt like it was more of a of a risk. And then the only thing is I never beat it because the last boss they changed the. I think the last boss in normal is four phases. And in uh, in on hard, it's he could just randomly switch between faces <laughs> or something. There's no breaks or anything in between, and it, it was just hard as fuck. I'm remembering the last boss on normal being extremely difficult. Yeah, I, yeah. I think even even on normal was pretty hard, especially without. I think if we you, were warned you, not to play it on hard. You can new game plus that over and over again, obviously, and then just build your stats up and make it a little bit easier. But you still have to dodge and block, and sh- you know, have to still have to be able to do that. Um, and on hard, he just doesn't, I don't, you know, he just doesn't telegraph as, as much as he does on normal, you know, because his, his moves are kind of more random. Um, but yeah. yeah, that game's, that game's a lot of fun to play. It, the story is annoying and the, you know, you know, you, you know, you walk up and you see, you know, snow turning half the sea and you punch him in the chest. That's always fun. A, <laughs> <laughs> wake up. Like, all right. That, that's the other thing. Okay, really quick on the trilogy. What the hell happened to Snow? It's like, here's Snow. All right, it's all about Sarah. It's all about Sarah. Uh, I'm just going to go find Lightning now. I'm going to tell. Uh, why can Snow teleport through time? And why? where is he? And uh-huh. he's this. And then he gets one of the endings. I think twice. You did all the endings in 13 too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like one, he just like shows up on like a flying motorcycle. And he's like, I'm out of here. Let's do this. And he's like. <laughs> well, in the, in the novels. Uh, no, that's like oh, right. His, his right. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit explained. Yeah, I'm wondering if the time travel stuff will be explained. We still have two more of those books to read. Yeah, I don't know. If that's the answer, is I don't know. <laughs> Thirteen is just so it's so much, you know, and it's so much that like I, I don't really care that much about. So I don't want to know. Yeah. You know, the other thing, I think I had a better experience with Thirteen than a lot of people complained about it. Um. Because I bought the strategy guides because I always buy the like Prima guides like when they come like the big uh, collector's edition ones. Mm. And it's not necessarily that I'm using the walkthroughs and stuff. It's that there's like a whole intro section where it breaks down like what a Seath is and what a Lassie. And I read all that oh. before I played the game. So I didn't have to like go into the data log, figure all that out while I was playing. So I probably had a much more fluid experience than someone who just picked up the game and was like, what is what is this? What? Why are there so many names, and why do they all sound the same? Lassie, Seath, and Falsy can go to hell. The, the, they needed different names. And they I guess, but they're all based the on the... They're all based on the same uh, same thing, right? So they all come from the Falsy, so they should all have C in it, right? I mean, that's I guess that's no, the reasoning. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, you've got pumpkins, pumpkin, and then you've got pumpkin spice, you've got pumpkin seeds, you've got pumpkin... <laughs> pie they all have to have pumpkin in them because they all come from the pumpkin right yeah Except that's they, a real word are they and... all using the the pump latin root or whatever <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pump pie <laughs> pump seeds oh yeah that, that, i guess that's no it'd be pump c pump c pump pie <laughs> pumpy pump c and then pumpkin that's how well that's it's more like the spice word. girls right yeah, it's sporty and baby and uh, whatever. All right, let's end this conversation. Yeah, and um, I I know just about <laughs> the difference between all the Spice Girls as I do <laughs> when I'm starting out 13. Know the difference between Seath, Lassie, Falsy. Yeah. Mostly Lassie and Falsy is like which which one's which? False. I'm a Lassie. You're a Falsy. False. Ah, fuck. I'm out. I'm out of this. Yeah. I mean, they try to do that thing like they did in ten. I mean, ten was probably the most one of the ingenious ways that they got the 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 lore across was like, here's a guy who doesn't know anything, just like you. Now we drop him into this world, and everyone has to explain it to him. But they're really explaining it to you. And it's like they didn't really have that in in thirteen. Except they could have. Because they could have. We got some pulse people coming in from a different time period, and that could have been a change of perspective, or like a wide shot. Where it just says, you know, this is cocoon, this is pulse. Like the cocoon and pulse difference was never like, oh god, 
Yeah, if you had the stra- if you had the book, then you had like a map and all that. You know, you, the way it had lo- the way exposition was handled in thirteen. Yeah, it's just it. Honestly, I think it's like a big reason why people don't like it. I I, I think it's like unconsciously a big reason why people don't like that game. Yeah, pe- people bag on the linearity, but that's not the problem. I mean, have you played ten? Everyone yeah. loves ten, and you can't do anything except walk along the Mian High Road and keep you know for. Yeah, but they take your yeah exactly. They take your time getting into the world, but they take our time getting into all the worlds. In most of these Final Fantasy games, right? Like FF7 yeah. has its own kind of weird world, but they explain, like, oh, you know, there's slums yeah. underneath this thing. We blow up this thing, kills the slums. <laughs> there's a company involved, and you're slowly piecing together these breadcrumbs. It's not that slow, but like it's like the good chunk of the beginning is just like getting your bearings as far as like where you are in the city that you're at, and then it's like slowly the world starts expanding. Right. Yeah. And like they immediately in thirteen they got like a million different things going on at once. Clearly, like people are like being deported to purge. <laughs> like, what the hell is purge? Yeah. <laughs> Why but you have to admit purge? the op- the cutscene's sweet, right? Oh yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It means nothing, but it's beautiful. <laughs> Some kung fu on a train. Uh, there you go. That's what we got. All right. Oh. So I think that's all the spin. Yeah, the spinoffs were the 13s, the 210s, and Crisis Core, I think. And After Years. So. Oh, how was the, what did you think of After Years? Um, I, I, uh, I tried to play it right after 4. And I was like, I can't keep doing this, right? Because I was like, I just did all this, and now all my characters have no abilities. And it was sort of like I, I needed to take a break. So I came back to it after See, they, a while. They took a break. That's the whole point. They took a yeah, break. Yeah, they did. So it was, it was like the exact same <laughs> maps, the exact same characters almost with, like, less abilities. I'm like, all right, I'll come back to this, you know, in, like, a year or two. But I did, and it was, it was, it was good. But it was basically, I mean, it was the same mechanics as for, you know, so, um, you know, it, it's pretty good. All right. Um, okay. Well, do you want to do your rankings then? You got them ahead of you? I think that's uh, all the games, right? Yeah. So that's where I am today, playing right. through five for the second time. Right. That's nice. the other thing is I, I always said that you can't really rank these till you play them twice. So you guys can, you know, take that for what you – but – um. <laughs> <laughs> so you're uh, telling us to restart the show as soon as we're done? Is that what you're telling yeah, us? Yeah, you should probably just, just oh, reboot. Yeah, yeah bring just it a back. ten year experience instead. Um but you should bring it back with like Cam and uh Caleb Craig, but just have it like start from scratch and do the exact same things and see how they, yeah, anyway. Oh. Um, we we just reboot with new characters. The same but you they can have your names. So <laughs> they introduce themselves as us, but they are they're yeah. doing it too. Yeah, oh, well. That's kind of a cool idea. <laughs> They'll never do it. Do you guys want to host UFF? Yeah. Version 2. It's uh, HD. Yeah. <laughs> HD yeah. edition. All right, Ryan. All right. Um, Give us your rankings. Yeah, so we get – the other thing I just want to say before I did my rankings is I, I do play a lot of other RPGs, so I don't know if you want to do that after. I just want to comment on a couple things. but Oh, the comment. The, Go ahead. Um, so you guys, I mean, you guys are going to play a lot of them, like Secret of Mana and Chrono Trigger and stuff. And that's really cool. Like, those are really good games. I think Secret of Mana might be my favorite game ever, um, but it's tough. It's a tough call, obviously. But there's one game in particular that I've been dying for you guys to get to, um, and it's Bravely Default. It's, and I think our last game now? <laughs> second to last game, second yeah, because this Bravely game. second. And... Bravely Default was such a breath of fresh air when I played it. It is the perfect modern turn-based RPG, as far as I'm concerned. It has everything you'd want. It has the best job system I've ever played, by far. Um, it it has such nice like convenience things added to it. Like there's a just just out of the box, it's like turn off encounters. So if you oh. want to turn off encounters, you can turn them off. If you want to turn them up so that you get an encounter every other step, you could do that. So basically, if you want to walk and do the story, you could do the story. When it's time to grind, you turn it up and you grind. Oh. Right? There's auto battle mode. So when you're grinding, 
all you have to do is walk around, the fights happen, you click a couple buttons and another fight happens. It's just so perfect for people who don't have a ton of time who want to play and the story is good. I mean it's 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 a little it's a little convoluted but which of these, you know, square games isn't? Um it's just I it's amazing. That game is amazing. And and I'm really looking forward to uh, you know, you guys your 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 opinions of it, especially with the, all the Joe Core features they put in. It. <laughs> you know, I actually think I heard on Twitter. I haven't actually looked this up, but I think Four Heroes of Light. I think Bravely Default was originally supposed to be a sequel to Four Heroes of Light, which is the game that we're currently on. Oh, that makes sense because it's Four Heroes of Light in that that basically is the. the yeah, <laughs> it's four. It was supposed to be a sequel to that game, and Four Heroes of Light. Yeah, it has an auto battle mode. Um, it's still turn based. It's really like simplistic kind of um stripped down version of the turn base. It has the job systems in it. It's a really easy version of the job system. It's not an easy game, uh, but it's like forgiving plenty. So I'm wondering, uh, yeah, maybe you should uh if you like Bravely Default, maybe you should play uh its progenitor. Uh um, oh, okay. The Final Fantasy the Four. Is that a D is that a DS game or is it on uh, Yeah, what's it's that a on? DS game. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, I picked up. That's the other thing. As I picked up Theater Rhythm, Theater Rhythm, the other month when Schweiss was like, "This game's actually really good," and I was like, "Okay, I might as well just pick it up." So. Uh, yeah. Play it. <laughs> Did you play it? <laughs> yeah. No, I like Theater Rhythm. Oh, yeah. good. It's, yeah. Like I said, I'm really big into the music. Like I have all, you know, I listen to all the Distant Worlds and I've gone to the concerts a bunch of times and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I I still play Theater Rhythm every every so often. I know we reviewed it like a month ago so it's not like it's you know <laughs> years after the fact but it's it's a lot of fun i'm glad you glad you liked it all right okay so um i wrote these rankings down a while ago and i wrote them into tiers um so i'll try to rank them on the fly here but at the very bottom is tactics but that's not fair because i didn't really play it um but you know you I already I already complained about tactics so we'll let that go um <laughs> But two is probably I would say two is probably my least favorite. Although to be fair, that's as I common, mentioned, I like that's to, a common least like favorite. To play it twice. Two is the only one I have not played twice yet. So maybe on second viewing, um, it will be higher. But two is probably play a version you can cheat, <laughs> <laughs> or play the version that's like a normal Final Fantasy. That's what he did. He played version. he played the uh, Dawn of Souls version. No, they got rid of the cheating thing in uh, that one. Did they? Yeah, they did. That oh. that was the first one where they oh, fixed it. Oh, yeah, you're right, yeah. So he's got to go back. Yeah, you got to play the the broken-ass version. That's fun right there. <laughs> one shot and stuff you should not be one shot Including your own characters. Yeah, including yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so two is the worst. That's two fair. is probably the lowest. And then I'm looking at these these rankings, and they don't – I'll just I'll – just, I'll trust my rankings here. Um, so the next one I have, obviously, is 10-2. Do you want me to throw the spinoffs in, too? Sure. Yeah, hell yeah. Do We're it. about to. So 10-2 so. is a garbage game, and I hate it. Anyway, well, it's just – I peop, I don't know people who like that game. I don't get it. Oh, the job system is not that good. The dress fear system is not that good, and all you have to do is get Dark Knight, and then you can beat the boss at, at like, level 20 or whatever, and it's not hard. But, I mean, maybe that's cheesing it, but – um, I no. hated that game. I hated the story. I hated the songs. What, I just what can I do was, for you though, Ryan? Yeah, <laughs> you could do anything but this. I could play that game for a thousand years, and I wouldn't relax. <laughs> you have a thousand words or more. A thousand words. The yeah. Hatred. And of I want to just rail on that game. Um, so I don't know. And it, anyway, so it's I played not, that. It's on. not cheesing it if you have to have Dark Knight to fucking beat the game. All right, <laughs> it's so fucking hard without Dark Knight. And then you get it, it and is. you just whoop that guy. You just fucking wreck his I shit. I tried it. So this last time I played it, I played on the remake. And I tried to do it without Dark Knight. And I'm like, I can't. I just can't. And I'm like, I'm not doing the song steps again. Like, just, <laughs> all right. Just, let me use the Dark Knight. Uh, oh, man, that was horrible. I was, like, very, very inebriated that night. And I, I was like, that. I was <laughs> looking at this thing, and it's like, oh, just play the song. And I'm like, what? I can't play the song. <laughs> It's like this two-hour clip, and I'm just like looking at the guide, like okay, le upper left, <laughs> back down, and I had to restart it like three times. And then I got to the end, and I couldn't even beat him because I didn't have Dark Knight. 
fuck that, man. <laughs> um, okay. So this is a list. I guess when I made this list, it was based on favoritism, not necessarily which is better, which I think you guys have discussed is like two different things often, They're right? Not, yeah, often they are. Uh, you You can decide what your rankings are. Yeah, so... The next one I have, I have a tier, and you guys – so the tier includes 15, 8, 12, and Crisis Core. And I'm noticing a, 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 a link between 15, 12, and Crisis Core in that they're all sort of those walk-up-to-the-monsters and mash X uh, type of games. Well, like 12, you uh, don't even mash anything. You just Yeah, 12, you just let it play itself. Yeah. But um, I would say, man – Crisis Core is probably the next one. Um, you know, it's it's a PSP game, right? So, um, but it's it's it, it's I like the story. I like the, the the added, you know, the the lore adding to seven. You know, that's always good. And and the the music in that game is really good. So, um, you know, I'm a fan of Crisis Core. And then I would say uh, probably. Man, thirteen three probably lightning returns is next, and then oh, it's either eight or twelve. Uh, it's a tough one. I hated twelve the first time I played it, and I ne- I went to go play it again, and I was in Rabinaster, and I was running around. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I didn't even like this the first time. Um, but then when I played the remake, and the remake's actually. That's the thing about these games is depending on what version you play, you could probably rank them like all different. Like if you play nine on the PS1 and you're sitting there and, it, it, you know, you're in battle and it's like you're waiting for the ATB gauge to go up like over and over and over again. But if you play the Steam remake at times four speed, that game flies and it's a lot of fun. Right. So it's sort of like the version you play can actually um, play a big role in, in how you'd rank these. I don't um, think I so would ever I, want to play at times four. Right? Oh, you do. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. You you think you don't want it until you have it, and then you don't want anything else. Times four is real fast. I do times, what is it, times six on, uh, no, it's times four for Zodiac Age. I yeah, do that walking Zodiac around in Rabin Aster, just dodging people like a fucking <laughs> madman. <laughs> You okay. can't go should, back, man. I'm telling there you. There should be a patch for collision damage, and you should see how far you get in the town. <laughs> yeah, there's like mini games where you just see who could survive the longest, just fucking sprinting through town. Yeah, it's you. Oh man, it's beautiful, dude. I. All right. And that's for games All like right. seven. If you seven, we never thought was slow, but when you turn off the times four on seven, it feels yeah. fucking slow, man. Yeah, man. All the games are – everything's so fast now. Yeah, it's great. You want times four. All right, so we got Lightning Returns. What are you putting above it? Lightning Returns, then I'll go I'll go 12, uh, then 8, then 15. So 12 the, – the reason I don't like 12 and, – and actually maybe it's not fair, but like I play 12 and I always just wander off. You know, it's sort of like when uh, we, one of you guys was talking about playing Skyrim and you're like, I want to do the story, but then I found a dog and I followed the dog for eight hours and, and then I forgot <laughs> what the story was. And that sort of happened to me with 12 where I'd be like, oh, there's all these hunts. I better start doing them. And uh, then better not by the time 11. I get back to the story, I'm like one-shotting everything. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, the hunts were good. Um, <laughs> so, and I don't really, I really don't like the Gambit system and, and, so that's why 12, I guess, is – and the music's not super great, um, yeah. although I really like the boss battle theme. So. Um, then 8, and 8, you know, 8 is a lot of fun, especially, like, on subsequent plates. Like, the first time I could see where you might like 8, but knowing how to to totally just, like, warp 8 and do whatever you want with it with the whole – the card system and the tri- triad and, and the magic system, that game is can be a lot of fun on subsequent playthroughs. So I guess it's only low because if you just will go into it, go into it blind. I mean, you, I mean, Joe ran into this. I think it was like, you're like, I need to level up. And you're like, no, four no, times don't. of restarting this game to beat it. Yeah. But uh, I did a, I've done a game normal. I've done it on a, like a no level run. Get any experience. It's, it can be a lot of, fun. it's hard to do and, that. No level. I've done a low level run. But to keep you at it's seven, it's hard to get zero exp. It's actually really hard. There's a Steam achievement for it, I think, um, which I got. But 
yeah, it's um, it's it's easy if you go low level um, on that game and just get magic. So playing the cards, and then you got fifteen. Plus, yeah, you so gotta play like, cards. That's like mid tier, I guess. Fifteen, lower mid. Yeah. So then fifteen. Um, and the problem with fifteen was I hated fifteen. I played. I hated. It, I hated. It, I hated it. And finally, I got to the end game stuff, and I loved it. It was like it took me like sixty hours to figure out the battle system. Like that was the like I don't know, but it was like it was miserable. I'm like, why am I finding golden frogs? <laughs> yeah. Well, this, this car ride thing was cool, like for the first ten hours, but now I need to drive somewhere, and it's just annoying. And the the load times weren't great. I don't know why. Um, when you warped, it still took a while, so it was kind of irritating. But um, so 50, I always say fifteen is probably the worst game I've ever played for a hundred hours. Oh wow. <laughs> so, Okay. Yeah, so I mean, it wasn't that. I mean, it's a Final Fantasy game, right? It's not garbage. Have you rushed um, the story before? Uh, no. So that one I also have only played once. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna do New Game Plus and try to play through just the story and 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 do that. Just but, like, um, see how that all kind of see how it comes back. Yeah, together. see see if it's better on a more linear path to see. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think after like chapter four, I was pretty much like just heading towards the end. Yeah, yeah, it gets better, and and yeah, we I when we reviewed it, I think my save was over a hundred hours, and it might be one of the it, I don't know if it's the worst game I played for over a hundred hours, but I mean, there's only like six six or seven games that have done that, and it <laughs> might it might be I don't know I mean Civ I thought it was is... Digimon Cyber Sleuth, and you put a hundred hours into that? No, <laughs> no, it was 40. felt like a hundred hours. <laughs> it was forty to fifty, which is that's too that's much. awful. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's fair for fifteen. That's fair. Um, yeah, so fifteen, and then I would say probably then one. Um, wow. you know, thirty times. It, yeah, I played Put it a it bunch. <laughs> I played. I I'm playing through the Donna Souls version now, and in, in a little bit of spare time. That's interesting. What they changed there. Um, yeah, you don't miss. In, yeah, yeah, you don't miss. Way. Um, but it's actually, I think they made it a lot easier to get gold and stuff. I, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I haven't Potions looked up exactly. more forgiving. I remember that. Oh, yeah. Twice yeah. And there's I... Phoenix Downs. Phoenix Downs. Yeah, it's Phoenix a huge. Downs. Yeah. So I would say one, then three. And three, I played the DS version. And I played the Steam port. Um, and I actually really hated, th- like, most, like, I hated three that first playthrough. Um, and I actually really liked it the second playthrough and it was more like just knowing what was coming. I spent just like a tiny bit more time grinding, you know, in certain places. Yeah. Uh, so when you get to the crystal tower, you're not like pulling your hair out while you try to climb up it six times. Um, <laughs> more than so, that. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say, yeah. So then one, then three, and then four and five are really close for me and actually if i had to rank the versions the 4 ds version is probably worse than 5 but then the 4 psp complete version is pro- is better than 5 um so i don't know if you guys played did you guys ever play the psp complete that's the one we i played yeah i that, played after years on it it's amazing yeah it is really i mean the work they did with the sprites i mean that that game that's really tight the way they did that yeah, I would. Uh, that the original version of four is kind of clunky. It's very clunky in comparison to either of those versions. Caleb Craig recommends the DS version, but he never played the PSP one. Yeah, I played uh, the PS one version, and I do not recommend that one. <laughs> ever. That's the anthology one. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. Uh, but the PSP, you're right. It looks so fucking good, like so cleaned up, and it's like it's like the perfect rendition of that and I, I feel like that's kind of the catalyst for some of these later games like uh, what we got with um, uh, Octopath Traveler and stuff like that yeah. where it's like a really high def but it still has the sprites I think you know what I would love I think Complete kind of did that I would love the first six games to be remastered by the team that did the Complete Edition of 4 what about all 15 that's just the, the sprites <laughs> Past that, it becomes like a different thing. But they got the 2D Final Fantasy thing right. Yeah. Yep. So, come on, guys. So we agree. Yeah, that's the that's the definitive 
version as as it's the complete as far as we're edition. Concerned. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's such unfortunate no one has a fucking PSP. I don't know what they have on Steam, but um and I I guess I didn't throw After Years in cuz I forgot to for, forgot to put it on my list, but it would probably be down there with with Lightning Returns. Um Okay, probably would it, would it be above or below Lightning Returns? Probably below. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to put that there. Uh, okay, so which one are you officially placing higher? Four or five? I would say four is the better game. Okay. And and a and I like it, but I like it more. And I know who Tella and Fasoy are. By the way, that's me. I'm oh. the annoying guy. Oh, okay. oh yeah. really? I'm the annoying Tella Fasoy guy who was like, "Hey, you guys don't know what you're talking about." Um. The, so that was the funny thing is you read my uh you read my question and then, uh, Schweiss follows up Got with like, else but, wrong. but he's like. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because when Tella dies, you just replace him with Prelay. And I'm like, no, that's a different <laughs> thing. <laughs> and I was like, I couldn't tell. If, I'm pretty sure you weren't doing it on purpose, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, he wasn't. I, that's yeah, I wouldn't mind it if you were doing it on purpose because that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. And it's sad because I know now, and that was years ago, and I should have known then more than now because I haven't played <laughs> either of those games since. I just, ah, oh man. Yeah, that's funny. Fuck you for that. Yeah. But yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so then I have, then I have 13 2. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so 13 2. The thing about 13 2, I used to think 13 2 was better than 13 until very recently. Um, and I think the reason was that when I played 13, it was on a full TV, but when I played 13 2, it was on like a little 27 inch. And you don't notice the hu- I this this past year I played thirteen with my five year old because you can play thirteen your five year old can play thirteen because it has auto battle and you just say keep pushing X, um <laughs> and and then Bartanella shows up and you're like okay let me let me take care of him but um but yeah so I played thirteen and I had a really good time playing with my five year old. And then we're like, okay, let's do 13 2. And I'm like, oh, they really, because I was playing on like a 60 inch TV now. And I'm like, oh, they really, you know, cheaped out on the graphics. And they really, like, it's just not as polished. No, um, and, and so and Lightning while, Returns is worse. Yeah, Lightning Returns is even worse. Um, but for 13 2, I mean, the story's not that great. So I wouldn't give it the edge in story over 13. The only thing I really liked more in 13.2 was that they fixed some of the battle system problems and they added the, you know, they, basically it's just the battle system. And and the, and uh, Caius. Caius is, is one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, I think I forgot to write down where 13. I didn't get there yet. Oh, I thought, okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 13.2. Now I have a tear with 13 and 9 in it. And if I had to play one today, I would play 13 is what I would say. Wow. Now, 9, if you play the Steam version and you have the times 4, it might actually be better. But if you play OG 9, it's <laughs> like coming off at 13 where everything's like whack, 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 whack. It was like super fast battle system. And then you run into 9 and it's like, it's like <laughs> you're like waiting for Zidane, Zidane's uh, ATB to load. Um, yeah. That game and, is slow coming after eight, by the way. And the yeah. trance system. I fucking hate the trance system, dude. It's so fucking so I, stupid. Yeah. God. The, the only game where you can't save your overdrive until when you want to use yeah, it. Yeah, it's like it's like you're coming too early, you know? Like that's what that that's all FF nine is. It's like oops. Oh, I came thirty seconds in. Sorry, we can't use this for the final form. It's like thanks, Zidon. Thanks for yeah. your fucking stamina. God, the Digimon game I just played has the same same fucking thing in it. God damn it, dude. It's such a dumb dumb fucking ultimate system. So dumb. <laughs> that, so tell us how you really feel about it, Schweiss. God, it's and I forgot about that. I forgot about the <laughs> trance thing until like a week ago, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is the same thing in Digimon." It's so fucking dumb. <laughs> All right, so nine. So I would say 13. nine, then thirteen. Yeah. Okay. God, how many games do we have left? Three. Three. Okay. What are your top yeah, three? You know, I got the usual. 
six, seven, and ten on the top, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, ranking these, I'd probably say ten is next. Um, it looks, I mean, it, at the time, it looked amazing. It was super progressive. It's actually turn based, which is one of the, you know, which I like. Um, you know, ten ten's a great game, and is you know, Xanarkin's a really good piece. You know, I'm a fan of the music. I'm a fan of the battle theme with that sweet bass line. I mean, ten is ten is good. Ten is good, and Auron is a sweet character. Plus, they have that. Um, you know, most of these have the have these sort of um, you know those twists at the end, and I never saw that Auron twist coming. You know, I don't know if we could spoiler alert. You know, the uh-huh. <laughs> came out in 2001. Yeah, but that, <laughs> yeah, but when you find out that Oren died, and you're like, "Holy shit, what?" Like in the final Aeon, like the whole thing's like a lie, and you're like, "Oh wow, this is." And then, the best part of that game is actually you go back to uh, when you go back to the Val or whatever, and you you see Maester, I don't remember his name, Maester Tella for Soya, but um, <laughs> see that guy, and you're like, "You defeated Unaleska in the final Aeon," and he's like. We have no chance. He just sends himself. He's like, peace. I'm out. <laughs> it's like, we got no chance. <laughs> and it's like, oh, all right. Well, I guess we got to do this ourselves. Um, so <laughs> that that whole game is good. And that was the first game I think I did um, that had that I played because I played it in like a weird order. That was the first game that I played like a significant part of like the after, like the uh, the post game stuff where you're fighting super bosses and doing the the um, the arena and all that stuff and and. And so that that um, that played a big role because it had a huge replayability or at least time sync. Yeah, uh, it's right. twice now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he did you play? Have you played the HD version? Yes. So did yeah. you do the Dark Aeons the second time around? I did, um, and they are hard. Um, so what happened was I beat one of them just to say I beat them, and then I was like, so I got to the point where I was in the arena and I was just grinding, and I'm like. I got three kids. I don't have time to just grind on this like this worm thing for like 18 hours. So I was like, you know what? I got to the point where the grinding is is just a, a menial task. I'm gonna say that if I continued at this rate, I would beat it. Maybe I'll pick it up later. But I, I was trying to fill out the sphere grid to to fight, you know, penance and stuff. And I'm like, I just I don't. I'm not gonna sink this much time into it right time now. For this. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah. All right. So, which one's better, six or seven? Okay. So, I struggle over this, but uh, the problem is favoritism leaks in, and six ends up winning because it was it was my first like real. I pay. I mean, I paid a lot, and I played the crap out of it. And seven, the first playthrough wasn't exactly smooth, as we discussed. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I played seven a bunch of times since then. I played the Steam version, the PS One version. No, I played six. I played the GBA version. I played the Steam version. I played the original version. They're both really good, and it's hard to tell. You know, I would say, you know, six is probably my favorite game. Seven might actually be a better game if you take the polygon thing out of it. You know, that's, I mean, six will look good forever, right? Because of the nature of it. Um, You know, seven might be a little. You know, I'm big on music, and the soundtrack in seven and the soundtrack in six are also really good. So I would say six, just a tick above seven. It's not by much. All right, I I concur. <laughs> um, so your list, as I have written it down, <laughs> I will uh, reiterate real quick. Um, at the bottom we have tactics, followed by FF2. Followed by ten two, followed by Crisis Core, followed by After Years, thirteen three, twelve eight, fifteen one three five four, thirteen two, and the top five are FF nine, thirteen ten seven, and number one spot is Final Fantasy six. So that is Ryan's official rankings. I think that's is that the highest we've had thirteen on anybody's list. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen 13 above 9 before, so that's really interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying uh I'm not saying yeah. you're wrong, but I'm saying that's very interesting. Um so there we go. Ryan's rankings. Thank you Ryan for coming on the show. Are you ready for uh 
some stump the host? Sure. Yeah, I'll do my best. All right. Welcome to Stump the Host. Five questions. Advantage goes to our wonderful guest here, Brian. Brian. <laughs> Not Brian. Jesus. They're all tactics questions. All of them are tactics questions. <laughs> Question number one. I've seen Schweiss's look on his face like, I think that might actually be the case. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I, didn't, I don't have any from tactics, actually. Okay. So... <laughs> Ryan, you get the advantage. You get one try, Joe gets a try, and you get a final save. And if no one gets it, no one gets a point. Whoever gets the most points wins. The honor of defeating Joe or defeating you. What is the name of the dragon that flies around overhead in Final Fantasy VI? The dr- the dra- well, Death Gaze is the one you find in your... Uh... You run into Death Gaze in six when you're flying around in your airship. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Death Gaze or Doom Gaze. I think it was Doom Gaze in the one I played. But yeah, that is correct. And he yeah, is true. tough to kill because you have to keep finding him over and over and over again. So That's right. I remember that part now. Yeah. Uh, he's also not tough to kill because you can glitch him. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's there too. So Joe, down by one point. What is Gilgamesh's dog's name in Final Fantasy XII? In Final Fantasy XII, what's his dog's name? Yeah. You should know this. Shadow. No. no. Go ahead, Ryan. I don't know. Uh, I mean, is it is it Dogo? No, it's... Ah. Uh, all right, Joe, you get one more try. There's, I could give you a hint that would give it away. Think. Uh, I don't know if that's dick, too. All right, you know what? Both of you can answer it. Think the actual story of Gilgamesh. Who's he with? Oh. Enkidu? Yes, it's Enkidu. Right. It's weird that he's his dog in the, in the fucking game. I was like, why is he his dog? All right. Uh, anyway, so tied up one to one. Luckily for you, though. You played a lot of seven and ranked at number two. Who is the head of public safety at Shinra? Which character from Final Fantasy Seven? Public safety. Yeah. Oh gosh. He's got the annoying laugh. It's Heidegger. It is Heidegger. <sighs> and this is a good round so far. Every question has been answered. Um, beautiful, beautiful, Joe. Oh, we got two more questions left. Yeah, Joe, tie it up. What is Barrett's hometown in Final Fantasy VII? Where did he grow up? Fuck. God damn it. You know I haven't played this game in like three years, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, I do. Um, Barrett's hometown. No pressure, but I know it. Heim. Heim? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> It's Corel, isn't it? Yeah, Aww. it totally is. It's Corel. <laughs> All right, so three to one, um, and it's also Ryan's turn again. So, <laughs> speaking of apples, we just had an off off air conversation about apple rankings. What are the apples in Crisis Core called? Benor apples. Or what's the nickname? Oh, uh, the fruit of the goddess. <laughs> What? No, they they they. Yeah, I'll give it to you. They call them dumb apples. Oh, that's right. They are. They call them dumb apples. You're right. Yeah. But it is. It is technically what you. I got my ass handed to me, <laughs> Ryan. I remember when you were talking about the story in uh, Crisis Core during this, and all I could think of were was dumb apples. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's a great story. <laughs> they talk about the fucking apples for like ten minutes in this game. No, it is good though. Uh, great Did you job. count the apples in the mansion when you played? <sighs> Wait for the to unlock the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, 
the truth is uh, we got Honeycrisp at number one, Fuji at number two, <laughs> Red Delicious at number three, Ambrosia uh, at number four, and Yellow Delicious taking up the bottom with uh, the Stump the Host. Yeah, yeah. That's how we did this, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ryan kicked my ass at four, and I got one. So Yeah, great job, man. Congratulations, um, Ryan. Thank you so much for coming on to our show. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, all the kind words over the years, you know, calling us out for mixing up two <laughs> mage characters who, honestly, one of them's generic and the other one's really not. So shame on us. <laughs> Who saw you sign they're both up? Old. They both died. Yeah, true, true. That's kind of unfair, man. Like it's like everyone in four gets brought back except the really cool old guy. He can stay dead. <laughs> like, I thought that was kind of unfair. He got a he got a raw deal that that uh, that Tella uh, in FF four. But yeah, man, thank you so much for the support over the years. Keeps the lights on. Keeps the the bulb in this China China ball above our heads. Working lovely. That we can't even use on Twitch because no. the Twitch thing isn't working. Yeah, that we it makes us look great though in person. That's right. For this Sorry. audio, it gives us a nice soft glow. That's right, a soft glow to our voices as well. I think it carries. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it carries. Oh, um, my daughter's uh, here. Oh shit! All right, well, thank you guys very much. I, you know, I appreciate the uh, all the effort you put into the podcast. So that's why I uh, went on Patreon. So best of luck in the future. All right. Yeah, same, man. We'll talk to you later, yeah. all right? All right. Have a good one. You too. We'll see you. Yep. Okay, well, that was Ryan. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank Ryan once again for coming on to the show. Very much so, yes. Uh, uh, we. I know we owe you guys like still like three or four plus of these things. Um, if we do them, even if we're done with the weekly thing, like if we'll we have to, them. we'll still do them. Yeah. It's not like and, – and, and honestly, we're not trying to avoid you guys. The scheduling is an absolute nightmare for these things. It is <laughs> That's so, why the episodes have been coming out at weird times. Yeah, because it's so hard for Joe and I to have, like, the same time or, like, the same energy because, yeah, we could both record at 3 in the morning, but if it's a day that I got off at 10.30 at night, I'm, I'm probably, probably pretty tired by the time <laughs> 3 o'clock rolls around. So we're sorry about that, but we will get to you guys – um, when we can on the Patreon episodes, we're going to try to get through all of the 13 novellas and, of course, the games. And then, like we said, um, Joe is going to take, I think, all of July off from Final Fantasy. Yeah. And then we'll kick we'll kick right into Final Fantasy 14, I believe, at the beginning of August. That'll and we'll, be fun. The, we'll work on that, that new expansion. Yeah. Um, it's just sad that we're not going to do it right when it releases, but... I don't know. You got a lot of stuff going on, so yeah, I gotta, I gotta take July. And it, it sucks because we won't be able to but run August, through the content. I don't need to take August. We get yeah. <laughs> as far as I as far as I know, I think August is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I can do an MMO. It's a great time for some MMO, right? Yeah, sure. So uh, hopefully you guys join us for that. Um, and I think that's it for Where this Where are weekend. you in? Oh yeah, yeah. We didn't do that. Uh, same place I was last Four week. Heroes of Light. Oh, right at the beginning. The Red Mage inside the cave that you can save at. I'm actually still at the same place uh, that we talked about. I'm not sure if I'm at the same place that we did last time we recorded. But um, been stuck on a boss. Found out that I didn't have the <laughs> I didn't have the black magic spell. Found out that at a certain point in the game, that black magic spell becomes unavailable to buy. Oh wow! Completely. So hopeful. So like, I have to use. I had to upgrade the non-elemental weapon on one of my guys in order to do some like okay damage. But I'm doing like twenty a hit, and the guy has like four thousand health. Oh, that's fucked up, dude. Yeah, that's a lot. I know. Has it been that bad the whole time? It's like? been that bad for the last week and a half. Hmm. I've been on that same guy, and I got kind of in the same situation before, and I was like, oh, I'll just buy myself out of this by quitting. And I, I didn't want to do it because there was a big puzzle before this boss, like moving the floors around and shit. And I just didn't want to go back to town because that would reset all the floors. And then I went back to town anyway because I was doing seven a hit 
uh, when uh, when that was going around, and I literally just kept my my player on. I kept the DS on for like hours, and he was like attacking him. And then occasionally he would get wiped out. Not the party, but the one guy. Mm. He was the like the weakest guy to the to the magic. And so like sometimes I'd have to oh I'd have to go pick up my DS again, revive him, and then start the auto shit rolling again. God, and then wait. So it was terrible, and then I went out and I was like, I'll just buy the spell, and like nothing was working because the the day and night cycle affects what they sell in the stores, and at a certain point in the game, the day and night c- cycle freezes. Yeah, when you're at a certain spot. Yeah, when you're at a certain spot, and it, I fucking don't have thunder. I have no thunder magic at all anywhere. Wow. And I need it. Yeah, that sounds. That oh, sounds it wasn't very, thunder. It was wind. It was wind. It sounds very unpleasant to be I stuck. So you, I, I will buy everything that I can. Oh, when you see rainbow boots in the game in one of the shops, I know it's like really expensive. Sell all the gems and get the rainbow boots. Mm, nice. Yeah. Can, can, do you get to to do the rainbow in the dark as well? Can you use the rainbow boots at night? DM. I'm not gonna give you it. <laughs> like a rainbow, like a rainbow in the dark. Now, 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 now. I need lightning. <laughs> I need arrow. <laughs> but no one will sell it at night. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's like the beer lie here. It's like it's after what I am. An arrow can be so. That's crazy, dude. That's that. It sounds interesting, and it's like, oh yeah, that sounds like something they would do. And then when you realize that you get stuck on a boss, it's like, why would you do this? Why in God's name would you ever do this to me? Everybody else's good weapons are all elemental, too. Oh, so it's like useless. So one guy, oh. one guy can do damage. Oh, dude! Like the amount of grinding I would have to do in order for them to all have decent weapons that were non-elemental would be worse than me just like letting the game autoplay in the background while I do some work. So, I mean, I mean, it could take days. (laughs) I have no idea. My plan is to beat the game by the end of the week. I I think this will be the only boss where I have that problem on, but. Yeah, man, we, we were told this was a tough one. Yeah, it is not. It's tough and forgiving. It's actually like a really I think this is actually a really good game. Yeah. Um it does have that flaw of like a place in the game where you know you could be fucked and have no way out really, but I actually think it's like I think Four Heroes of Light may be kind of underrated. I think not enough people have played Four Heroes of Light. Oh yeah, that's I. No one ever talks about it. Yeah, so legacy, it's like an it's old like, school Final Fantasy, but it's like really polished and simplified. Yeah, yeah. I, it's God. I uh, when I told you, story's I died not the, any good. But yeah, it's yeah. like a bunch of animal switching and shit. But you know, besides that, when I told you I died to the boss in the cave, that wasn't even the boss. That was just like. That was like the the Minotaur dude at the very beginning of the game, and he killed me. And I was like, "Wow, that was ridiculous." And then I went back in, and I was like, "Oh, that wasn't even the boss. That was just a dude. That was just a <laughs> mini boss guy that was chilling in there, and he fucking he laid me out." Oh, but yeah. I I ended up beating him, and then saving at the red mage guy in the cave partway through, and then I'm like kind of leveling up a little bit because he, it's kind of brutal. Here's and, the deal. What's the deal? leveling oh no it's bad isn't it yeah it is bad oh my fucking god the only reason to grind is to get gems to upgrade equipment (sighs) do the bosses level up with you is that bosses level up with you and their stats stats level up so actually yeah just grinding without increasing equipment it's bad yeah i found that out when i found that out i was like Oh. Oh. I mean, is it FF8 bad or is it Revenant Wings bad? Because one of those is still beatable. FF8. And Revenant Wings is not, as far as I can it's tell. It's kind of like FF8 where you're putting uh, junction points. You're junctioning magic and stuff like that. 
that's not the case in this game. It's just equipment upgrades. And in order to get equipment upgrades, you do need to fight guys to get the drops. But it's just kind of like, you know, utilize your gems correctly. Okay. Um, get the best equipment that you can in each town before each section. Um, don't use that. Don't use those gems up at the beginning of the game if you can avoid it. So try to beat the boss without doing that. Oh, I sold a few. That was probably not great. So I've I still had to sell a few gems every once in a while just because there's certain like requirements, you know. And sometimes the equipment in order to get the best equipment in the area You gotta sell. You gotta sell the gems. Oh, okay. Uh just the lower level gems are easier to get back to. It's like there's like eight different gems. The top three gems, like at the bottom three slots there's like five like six seven and eight you would say as you were counting along Mm -hmm. don't sell those okay (laughs) (laughs) just sell just sell the first you know six slots or whatever the first four at the top and then actually it's just the last two it's like amethyst and something else are like only dropped super rarely in dungeons or in a boss fight Mm -hmm. like those are the just don't don't sell the bottom right hand corner of the screens gems everything else You'll, you'll come across again pretty easily when the game opens up. There's a certain point in the game where everybody gets together and there's an airship. And so you can go where you need to go oh, to, to get, get the, the drops. Because uh, certain areas have uh, certain drops on certain gems. Oh, man. that's it, it, sounds, it sounds like a weird almost MMO grind to it with the gems. Honestly, yeah. But it's more simple and it's faster. Yeah. Like every piece of – the biggest piece of equipment I ever had – as far as like level ups, they got like six level ups, so it's like usually like five different like random gems to mm. uh, level up the equipment. And by the way, when you press, when you go into the the weaponsmith area, you can go into there and like press on the equipment, and it'll like tell you what gems to use and like to insert into the slots. So actually, if you back out and then press it again, it changes. So if you're like low on a certain amount of gems or if you want like a more balanced amount of gems like which ones it's using oh, that's, uh, that's you nice. can kind of like use the RNG to your favor. That's nice but also bizarre that it doesn't just let you choose if it's going to but whatever. It's weird. And like that there's not a point system. It's based on different gems. That is kind of a weird system, but honestly like the game is really smooth and the gameplay, I don't know. I thought kind of like it twice yeah it's not easy but i kind of like the game well i'm excited to finally, finally play it play again it, when yeah. i get done with uh <clears throat> the next giant rpg i have to play which is are you gonna do that game. one first i think so i'm gonna play i'm gonna start playing uh four heroes at work and stuff as well though i might play it both at the same time supplemento yeah okay I, just they're like both supposed to be long yeah yeah, this one, I looked at my old save file. I don't remember it being 46 hours, but it was 46 hours. Oh, was it? Yeah, and I was like, oh, shit. The Legend of Dragoon? Shit. Yeah. yeah. It is four discs, and it's not like FF7 four discs where the last disc is really like the last 30 minutes of the game, you know, where it's just the just the fucking the meteor spot or the crater, the north crater. Mm-hmm. Um, it's full, uh, and it's long, so... I don't know. I'll I'll get to it though, and I'm excited too. I I liked the game so far with Four Heroes. I just I haven't played a whole lot, um, and it is nice to have something that difficult. Oh, times it's like pretty. I get, I got pretty owned immediately, which is surprising. Really, but yeah. Wow. Um, explorers in world are supposed to be easy. They're supposed to be long, but they're supposed to be easy. Yeah. So. I won't be stuck on a boss for a week and a half. To be fair, like, my life also was really busy during that time. And, like, we're finishing up the edit for 13th Cross. Like, we just did a finalized edit. We did a final edit. Then we showed it to a few people. We got notes back from them. And then we, like, decided on, like, nine changes. And every time there's an edit, it's, like, two days. Yeah. So, like, (laughs) there's always a back and forth between me and Parker. It's at least two days. So... We just finally, like, finally did that. So last week and a half-ish, while I was stuck on that boss, I was also working on the movie. So, but now that's kind of done, so. Uh, also, Dave 
Mustaine. I think he's borrowing a guitar of yours. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, so we're going to be getting those tracks here pretty soon. Should be, yeah. We owe, what, two of them now? Just one. Oh, just the... We haven't put one on the feed yet. It has, it's been available to Patreon donors for a long time. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and it's pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. But then uh, then he's got another one. Yeah. The, the time we'll put that on the feed is after the FF10-2 uh, book, which we should have done a long time ago. Yeah, we should have, yeah, but <laughs> circumstances got in the way. Yeah, I guess so. All right, man. I got to drive back to California right now. <laughs> well, it's it was nice hanging out yeah. for a podcast. <laughs> it was nice hanging out for a podcast. Do you want to go get some Wendy's or something? Yeah, let's get some food. Yeah, let's go get some food. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Thank you so much for the support. Um, Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Awesome. Great guy. Tremendous guy. Uh, and thank you to everyone who's ever donated to us on Patreon, PayPal, any of it. It really helps. It's really appreciated. It's it's so it's so fucking nice. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys again next week. Enjoy the grind. Thank you.